want a second look. Yeah. There's something about this one, isn't there? Familiar somehow. We think we're stuck in a specific fragment of time that we've been repeating that same fragment over and over. Again. But the flirting's over, Sherlock. Daddy's had enough. Hello and welcome to You've Seen It Before, TV Reviews, Connections in Mind. Loki has dropped on Disney Plus his first season, uh, and it stars once again Tom Hiddleston as Loki, who we last saw at the end of Avengers Endgame. And in this, uh, in this series, that Loki who stole the, uh, the Tesseract is immediately caught by a group of people known as the Time Variance Authority, or TVA. Uh, it turns out this Loki is what they refer to as a variant, uh, and this organization's role is to prune the timeline and keep these variants in check. However, Loki is now uh, conscripted to uh, hunt down a particular uh, variant who, as uh, the character played by Owen Wilson describes, is another variant of Loki. Now, this uh, video review will contain spoilers of uh, Loki's first season. I'll try to keep the, uh, the spoiler-free thoughts uh, to the first part of this review. However, just so you know, there will be some spoilers later on. How, uh, so, with that being said, let's get into some spoiler-free thoughts on Loki's first season. Is it worth seeing? Uh, now that all six episodes have been released on Disney+, Plus, uh, I would say absolutely. This is definitely one of those uh, Marvel TV series that... Um, knows how to, how to push the envelope in terms of imagination, uh, in terms of what if people can get away with in, um, in t uh, this Marvel Universe that they've created. Uh, if we look back, uh, even, you know, 2010 when Iron Man 2 was just very cut, first coming out, those are some baby steps. The thing that we've come now 11 years later, uh, or I guess you can go even further, 13 years uh, after the first Iron Man dropped in 2008, uh, that first Iron Man was a rather, um, it was a rather straightforward, uh, comic book movie, and now we get a, re a, is just so much stuff going on in Loki, I'm gonna keep, uh, keep the spoilers out of this part of the review, but, again, they, uh, they really, uh, opened up what is indeed possible in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and, uh, it's just incredible that we've come this far as an audience, for one, um, I mean, there's always those people who really read the comic books. I was not one of those people who read the comic books. I've only been following uh, the movies. And so this is, yeah, this is one where I'm just so excited that, that this kind of show can even exist uh, in this day and age. And really, all the credit should be given, uh, not all the credit, of course, but a huge heaping help of credit should be given to Tom Hiddleston as Loki, which in interviews he said that he's prepared to play Loki forever, and I believe him. Um, this is, uh, Loki is one of those characters that he is really the first, um, villain in the, uh, MCU that people can actually kind of point to and say, oh, hey, he's a great villain. Uh, and here we get to see him not just as a villain, but as, uh, sort of a hero. He's turned into a hero. We started this transformation in, uh, Thor Ragnarok back in 2017, but now we get to see all different sides of Loki, and he's much more of a fleshed out character, and I'm glad we get this kind of a series where we have the time to dive into what makes Loki, Loki, and um, they really ask that question blade, uh, point blank in this series, it's like, what makes him tick, and I think that's, that, uh, that just goes to show how there's, a, uh, there's an incredible amount of chemistry uh, contained just within Tom Hilston in his acting range. And not only that, but he's able to bounce off some great people, such as Owen Wilson as uh, Mobius. Um, that that is, there's one. Uh, they have a great, you know, uh, friend dynamic going on. There's also uh, a character played by uh, Sofia Di Martino, uh, who uh, Tom Wilson gets to act off of, and they're great together as well. This really is a character-centric. Uh, uh, series, but there's also, you know, just all the great sci-fi stuff that comes with this kind of show, and I, I just, I think they do such a good job balancing. Why I think this uh, series stands out, just like WandaVision stands out, is because it knows to play around with certain things. It knows to, uh, be, uh, to focus on the characters and what makes them, what makes them tick, and knows enough to be unique. Like, uh, 
again, this uh, I hate uh, I keep tra harping back to uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I feel like that uh, that series is going to be mostly uh, much more forgettable entry in the MCU canon, just because it does look so much like all the other. Uh, Marvel properties before. I will not mistake Loki for anything else in the MCU uh, uh, canon. Just like I won't forget, uh, pretend Wanda, uh, forget, uh, assume WandaVision looks anything like any others, except for that last little bit at the end. Uh, you can look at my review of WandaVision there. But yeah, that's Loki so far, the season one uh, has gotten into such a great uh, start, I feel. And I'm really looking forward to where they go from here, especially because, as I've said in my other uh, Marvel reviews, like it seems like a lot of the setup work for future MCU projects has been shifted from the movies to the, uh, the series, the, uh, because there's going to be a lot more series coming through Disney Plus in the, uh, the coming years. Uh, they have a lot more opportunity to set things up, and they do set up a lot of interesting things in this series uh, in this season so I want to get right into the spoiler stuff uh, as quick as possible just because I feel like that's a lot easier to talk about spoilers uh, than trying to keep me cagey uh, as to what uh, is going on in the series so without further ado if I was going to give Loki season one a letter grade I would say this is a solid A um, there are a couple of things that I'll get into in the spoiler uh, the spoiler section that I feel like it kind of dropped the ball on but overall uh, those are just minor things, and this is definitely a series that you should check out on Disney Plus. Um, and I feel like uh, this is one. Uh, this is a series that, yeah, yes, you can now binge all six uh, six episodes in a row. However, I would say this is definitely one where you uh, you might want to uh, avoid binging this. I think uh, this weekly weekly release model that we had leading up to this, I think it worked really well. It get, built up a lot of hype, and I think it. Uh, adds to the story and builds up the mystery associated with it. So if you can, maybe space things out a little bit. Maybe two episodes at a time. So those are my spoiler-free thoughts on Loki Season 1. Now let's get into some spoiler talk where I talk about certain uh, plot developments and character arcs that may seem familiar to you and where you may have seen them before. Now, obviously the big one with uh, Loki Season 1 is the fact that this, uh, this whole central purpose of this... Um, this story is both Loki and Sylvie, uh, the Loki variant played by Sofia DiMartino, um, they're trying to find the timekeepers, who's behind the TVA, they want to tear, uh, Sylvie wants to tear them down, Loki kind of wants to uh, uh, also tear them down, but also kind of want to assume the mantle a little bit, there is definitely some, some elements to that, um, and obviously there's a huge Wizard of Oz feel to this, especially when, um, when Loki uh, uh, chops off the head of the uh, of the one of the robotic timekeeper in the timekeeper's chamber, is like it's a robot. Where's the real guy? And then they finally journey, take the long journey uh, to the void and in the house and find the wizard, or in the, in this case, uh, he who remains. And um, that uh, again, just find trying to find the wizard, and the wizard kind of explains what's going on here. Um, that really just kind of, that, that's really obvious one, I feel like. Also, um, this is another comparison that's been brought up before uh, by other people. The uh, There is certain, a, a certain Doctor Who vibe with this whole story, especially when, um, you know, you're jumping around from place to place and Loki and Sylvie kind of have a, especially at first, a Doctor companion uh, dynamic going on. Uh, even, there's, certain, uh, there's a certain amount of that dynamic with... Um, with uh, Loki and uh, Mobius as well, uh, and they're also you know bouncing around different times and places. You know, one minute they're in the TVA, the next minute they're in uh, uh, in Pompeii right before Vesuvius is about to go off. The, I mean, Doctor Who did that, so there's uh, there's definitely a certain element to also the fact that there's sci-fi uh, whole vibe with the time travel and all this and trying to impact, uh, impact the timeline in a certain way, and if you do uh, too much, then timeline's just going to erupt into, into, uh, into madness, uh, a multiverse of madness, if you will. There's all that going on. So yeah, Doctor Who's definitely another um, element of that. Uh, really, those are my main points of comparison. There's so many others that you could probably make. Uh, let me know in the comments down below on that. I just kind of also wanted to talk about um, I love the fact that there's all now all this this world of they've opened the door to the various Loki um, you know, variants like 
Alligator, uh, Alligator Loki is just, uh, incredible. I'm, I mean, didn't speak, but, uh, Alligator Loki is amazing. I love Alligator Loki. That's just gonna be my, my, my thing, my takeaway from, <laughs> from this series. Um, and, and also, the fact that they've introduced the multiverse in this way, it does open up the possibility of, you know, maybe some of these other characters, um, I mean, Marvel already had the issue of death was kind of, um, not permanent anyway. Uh, I mean, that's a comic book. That's sort of a granted. They are always going to do uh, random things. But this opens the door for, hey, if, you know, if uh, Robert Downey Jr. decides to change his mind and, you know, pop in uh, and pop in again, it's like, hey, he was just from this other multiverse, uh, uh, this other universe or whatever. And then by, it's like, that opens the door for that. And that's such a, uh, a fun thing that you can do with this, uh, with this option. I mean, there's also the options of, you know, an easy way to recasting uh, things like, oh hey, uh, this this ver uh, this version of person is from the this other multiverse uh, place where it's like, okay yeah they uh, it's like you know that the hero looks like that now cool, it's like now there's gonna be so many people who are gonna go back and say it's like wait was Don uh, was Don Cheadle's uh, uh, Rhodey um, a different multiverse uh, variant of uh, of Rhodey and that's why he replaced uh, Terrence Howard. Um, you know, there's going to be all those kinds of fan theories out there and, you know, have fun with that. But really, I just, uh, I love the fact that this, uh, this series was around and I love the fact that it's memorable. And I think, I hope that uh, everyone else who watched this thought it was memorable too. The one, my one big beef with this series and the reason why I didn't give it like an A plus or whatever is just because I feel like this ending, I love the fact that it's a cliffhanger. I don't have a problem with it being a cliffhanger. The problem with it being a cliffhanger in this current model is, A, there's only six episodes, which is, I mean, I like the fact that uh, WandaVision was only six episodes and uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier was only six episodes, but this one, you could have gone more in the fact that, yes, there is a cliffhanger, but that there's going to be, it's going to be like, you know, in a year or more before we get the new season, and it's not like, it, uh, and it feels like, uh, you didn't leave it in such a place. It feels like a mid uh, a mid season uh, cliffhanger rather than a end uh, a season finale cliffhanger. The difference between the two is that a mid season cliffhanger is what happens when you know it's a normal show, it's airing you know in the fall season, and then it's like oh yeah, we're gonna break for the the holidays or whatever, and we'll be back in uh, in early to mid January. So you have like maybe a month or so in between there. It's like okay, yeah, that's fine. It's enough hype. Whereas the season finale, it's like, oh man, we have to wait the whole summer to, to see this. And I feel like this um, this uh, this cliffhanger, while it is effective, it's, pro uh, it's probably not the best cliffhanger ever, but it's definitely, you know, probably top 20 or so uh, in in uh, my TV uh, pantheon or whatever that I have in my collection. Uh, I'd rank it up probably around uh, fairly high on that regard. Um, it, just, it just feels like... Uh, you want to jump into it right now. It's like, oh no, you gotta wait until uh, season two, which will probably come out, you know, 2023 or something. It's gonna be like, come on. That, that, so that's just more of like a disappointment or something. I know what they were trying to do, but in my estimation, I feel like they could have uh, given us a little something to tie this over until um, Loki season two comes around. So really that's my main, uh, my main nitpick as far as that goes. Also, uh, I feel like Owen Wilson probably should have done a little bit more in the series than he did. Um, it feels like a little bit kind of, uh, it's like, oh man, I love that character. He should have gotten so much. Plus, he should have gotten his jet ski moment. Maybe I'll wait until season two to give him his jet ski moment. But that's sort of a, sort of a bummer on that front. Um, also, with this kind of series, I, again, I love the fact that they, they do, uh, I mean, it's sort of a rarity these days, but... Each episode, they're or they're airing them weekly, and each episode actually does feel like its own separate thing. It's a beginning, middle, end. It, it can tell a, lo a larger story, a continuous story. That's great, but each segment is unique from one another. It doesn't feel like a six-hour movie that you just chopped into uh, into six pieces. Uh, and I love that about it. Uh, my uh, my only real uh, complaint about that is like if you're gonna do that. It's okay to go oh, past six episodes at this point. Uh, I mean, maybe that's just me griping that we didn't get uh, more answers to the season finale uh, right now. But 
I mean, yeah, that's just my my, my opinion on, on that front. So, I'm not bitter or anything. <laughs> uh, let me know what you thought of Loki Siege 1. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, what about my analysis? Do you agree? Disagree? Did I miss anything? I most likely missed something. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate whatever audience I can get. Uh, be sure to look for my next uh, movie review, which will be for The Suicide Squad, coming out on August 6th. Uh, and uh, be sure to check for my next uh, TV review, which will most likely be for uh, Lower Star Trek Lower Decks season two, which will be for uh, which will be coming out uh, starting in uh, mid August, I believe. So be sure to look for that. And if you liked this video or any other video on my channel, please give me a like, share, and especially a subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. But just remember, there is nothing new under the sun. And yes, you have seen it before.